Welcome to our Harmony Power Vodcast. I'm John Marion. I want to welcome John Sauer to our show. Welcome, John. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for having me today. And uh, I hear you're running as a Republican for the, is it the 11th District of New Jersey? Am I correct? Yes, it's the 11th Congressional District against Mikey Sherrill in this year's election. And I was saying, I was, I was looking into some of your background. You're 27 years old, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, sir. And, uh, and, you know, one of the things I read about was the fact that you had big concerns as far as, you know, as far as education and there's the, the private school sector, which is very expensive, the public school, you know, and, and they're making their own rules and you felt like there was nothing down the middle. Can you tell me about that? I, going through school, I was getting sick and tired of the schools not doing anything. And every time, either when I was bullied or anything like that happened, the schools would always make it worse. I know there are stories of people within my own town who sadly lost their lives because of bullying. And it was always the school would make the same mistake over and over again. They, they punish everyone and they just make the problem worse. And I know we're seeing a lot of the I, I don't know I'm not I don't know if I'm allowed to say it but the fun material that they're teaching children now in schools I'm trying to be a little bit PG but uh, they're they're forcing that in the public schools where if you go to a Catholic school or a private school you're seeing a lot of the growing of a student and it Let's allows back a little bit I, yes. I, I want to talk no, about, I want to talk about the fun material like yeah yeah so it's okay with the show I, I feel like everything should be transparent and yeah what your feelings about that, what is that, what what is being taught, what is being shown. Please give me the detail. Yeah, so they're teaching, again, pornographic material to children in a lot of regards. Uh, how, basic, how, old, how old are the children? That, that anywhere you're... between elementary school all the way up to middle school. Hmm. I, I know Rockway, where I, I'm from, it's not happening currently, but it will eventually happen. But they're teaching books to children like this book is gay, genderqueer, and a whole bunch of books like that are some of the bigger examples. And they're teaching children how to go to gay sex apps and how to perform sexual acts on other people. And it, they're teaching children as young as elementary school kids this. And that, on, that's my on, on how to have sex. How to have sex. They're pushing how to go to Grindr, um, kink.com to go do stuff like that it, it, it's very disgusting what they're doing and i'm seeing a bit of a pushback but i'm also seeing from all my town town hall meetings that i go to and all my school board meetings that there's a group of people that say oh they, they close they put their fingers in their ears saying la 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 la, la this is not happening don't don't but tell why, me but what's what's their what's the purpose behind it as you see it like what do you the think purpose you're trying to accomplish with children what are they trying to do to, to groom them, to to bring them up in a different way of life, to, to confuse them. So, and this is what I'm seeing with the whole transgender movement too. It's a lot of this stuff is coming from the schools where the teachers are teaching this to students and it's not allowing the student to come into fruition of this, where if they turn 18 and then they want to become transgender, different story. But a lot of the regards are coming out as young as 5, 10 saying, I believe I'm this because my teacher told me. And then the parents get involved and then Dyfus gets involved. And then it just makes the situation far worse where if Dyfus comes to, comes to your door and says, oh, your child is being taken away from you because you don't affirm that child's gender, which is despicable what, what's happening in California. I, I know there's been cases like that has happened in the past where parents were lost, lost right to their children because one parent wanted to affirm their gender. The other parent said, no, my child's a male when it's a when my wife's saying it's a female and then court cases ensue and then they lose parenting rights. And it's, it's a sad story that's happening all across our country. It's interesting. You know, this is a, you know, this is a very sensitive topic to a lot of people. Now mm -hmm. here, here is, there's a lot I could share with you with this. And, and I find it be interesting. Look, you were bullied, right? As a child. Yes. Right? Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll go, we'll, I want to hear about that. And then we'll go right back to this transgender the topic or gender identity what happened to you it was i was bullied through elementary school and middle school and i sort of switched schools from elementary school to mm -hmm. middle school when we moved from long island to to new jersey back to new jersey what part, part of long island uh smithtown okay i lived so, in New park and i was in i lived in brooklyn and new white park yeah the bullying didn't stop brooklyn to new white park they the brooklyn kids moved to new white park so it was like i couldn't get away from it 
<laughs> what, what did they what what was the how did they what did they do to you I it was just picking name like picking on me calling me names stuff like that i know back when i was young i would always carry and i have it still here a pocket constitution for my entire life and i was always made fun of like that and i didn't really have too many friends because i had adhd i still do and eventually the schools doesn't didn't really help out and this was back early 2000s um then when we moved back to New Jersey, I was bullied a little bit in middle school, but I also was able to overcome it by sort of fighting back a little bit. And it was once the person who bullied me found out that I was no longer a threat. Uh, I was actually a threat to them. The guy kind of me and him became good friends, actually. And we've been friends more or less ever since, because I see a lot of the bullying between males is uh, the the. the males being males a fighting contest and once you start throwing fisticuffs then they'll go okay let's go have a beer down the down the road two days later because you're all good friends again it's yeah the same thing. yeah well i tell you i admire your your energy and uh and and the fact that look the way i see it I, like i mentioned uh, but before we even uh, did this podcast is that mm -hmm. i don't identify as a, a democrat or republican i'm just a citizen who, and, and I try to keep my viewpoints open to everyone because I feel like it's that's critical to listen to people yeah. to listen to what um, is really going on. When it comes to children, I've been all over the country. Mm -hmm. I've been in the worst neighborhoods and I've, and once again, listen, and there, there, are, there are liberal viewpoints, there are conservative viewpoints, there, there are some in between. The biggest issue I see from what you're saying is when they remove parents from the equation. Yeah, I don't disagree. And I, something that I've been seeing in a lot of the regards is if we have two parent households, we could solve a lot of that stuff because a lot of right. the bullies that I've been seeing come right. from a single parent household. Right. Or they're coming from houses that have issues because of that. So right. So my my business in New York, I just I have a leadership school where we use martial arts to teach leadership, inclusive <laughs> empathic leadership. And that's mm -hmm. New York City is a very progressive when it comes to the gender identity and, and that kind of thing. But there's a way in which things transcend, right? Parental involvement should be part of the equation. Yeah. And most importantly, what the child says and how they feel, right, is important. Now, what that age is, you know, I'm still navigating what that is because I feel like puberty is part of it, right? When there's puberty and the way things are introduced or how much information is introduced. I feel like the generalization, the I, learning the ideas of things, uh, should they be showing things that are, you know, pornographic? I, I'm i not even sure what to say about that. Like, I feel like that, that's, because that's at the discretion of a parent. Yeah, it, it, that's what it should be. And that's what I've been standing with and with a lot of people. I don't, and I, I don't know like what the freedom is with that. So I'm still learning about that avenue. So I don't have an answer for that in the, as it regards to what that, intention is but i'll give you this little story that we, we i don't know what your what's your religion i'm roman catholic so i've been that way yeah, since i was born <laughs> i was raised catholic but i don't identify with a religion but i i pray yeah. and have my spiritual eye but I don't this, this one child was uh this child was about seven or eight interesting story and i what happened was this they were telling this child was telling his very christian parents like born again christians that you know, I, the boy, it was a boy, and the boy was saying that I want to wear a dress. Parents were not happy. They're Christians. You're a boy. You wear boy clothes, and that's it. It's not a discussion, right? Boy's in school, and the boy says to the teacher, um, you know, he draws this picture of an elephant in a cage. Teacher's like, why, why is there an elephant in the cage? The child says, Elef this elephant is very sad. It's very sad because she feels locked up. It turned out it was this child feeling locked up, crying to the parent. Um, and they weren't teaching this kind of thing in the school. It wasn't like they were talking about it. It was more like they, they, there was a, they just didn't do that. Now the parent, the mother was crying. She's like, you know, I should have listened. Anyway, that child evidently later on had a different gender identity and the parents were involved yeah in that right so i think that's that's the place we have to come to 
as yeah. it's a village, not. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't disagree. If if the parents are okay with it, and we can come to a middle ground, that's a lot better than. Right, and it, it's saying yes or no. Is, right, and I and I have situations, and I've got families where children that are raised in in a, in a very what you consider the uh, traditional environment, loving parents, and the child is a they. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what they means, but I love the child, and I've seen them grow up, and they're in my in my practice. And they'll try to explain it. And I'm still, I'm not in their shoes, yeah. right? Well, I'll have a, a, one of my staff is transgender. I don't understand it. I'm not in their shoes, but I respect them as people. Oh, I don't disagree. I respect everyone too. It, it's, uh, th there should be an age limit drawn when certain things that, especially yeah. medical procedures and stuff like that, should, yeah. are I, able. I, I can understand the sensitivity to that because things can happen where it's irreversible, right? So maybe they, yep. they're identifying one way and then it, they change their way and they can't go back the other way. And it, and it it's, becomes... It's, yeah, once you start doing the irreversible puberty blockers, stuff like that, that's where issues can arise. That's why I stand with 18. You turn 18, you're your own human being, you're your own adult. If you want to do it then, go right ahead. But then at that point, you're also up to the mistakes. If if you make a mistake in your decision, you have to live with it. And that's where I've always lived with my mistakes as much as I can. I, I own up to them because I've learned over the years, it's, it's your life. You make a mistake, you got to live to it. Right. I mean, it, it is, and I feel also there has to be like, it's like talking about abortion. People talk about that, which is a whole other topic. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's exceptions with things, you know. But I understand the the your idea of the continuity. There needs to be, mm -hmm. you know, something streamlined so it's not a free for all because people can get hurt in the equation because if people aren't working together. Yeah. I feel like you know the the parents have to be empowered to be back in the equation, and the schools have to do their job. But now, if you have let's say parents that are violent with their child and their child has no voice at home. And the only voice that they have is in the school. That's when I feel like the school is uh, their duties to take over. Yeah, and 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 I stand with that. If the school notices violence and stuff like that, yeah, that's the school can step in. But Dang, I've right. seen it in the past where the school doesn't step in fast enough, and it's it's never a black and white like on off switch where the school steps in and then it works perfectly, or the school doesn't step in and then it, it's right. fine. It's always they either wait too long they make it worse or something or they get it right. It, it's never, it's always a spectrum of what happens. And that's the problem. But i tell you the thing about gender identity, when you're in the air force or you're in the military and you're serving, you don't care about the person next to you. What, how oh, they, I don't disagree. Yeah. yeah it was oh, the same right. thing with yeah. it's a frame. There's no such thing as an atheist in a foxhole. It, it's every the person sitting next to you is going to stand up and fight no matter what it is. You learn, you learn about equality right away. And then yep. <laughs> you're, you're obviously, if you're American and you're in another country, like when I was transported to Germany and I love Germany, but I'm like, I'm in Germany. They see me as American. You realize right away how different things are. And you don't care about any, all of these things that people fight about is, is ridiculous. It, it's just so not American to be fighting about it, but they have discussions and to disagree and respect the other person, that's the place you have to come to. This is why I welcome you. I know that, like you said, the Republicans aren't getting the voice. Um, and I want to make sure everybody gets the voice, the Republicans, Democrats, yep. whoever is on the show. But he, but hearing your viewpoints is is very interesting. Tell me about this uh, school idea you have, because obviously, you know, bullying is the biggest crisis. Mass shootings is the biggest crisis. Uh, you have an idea of like a certain type of schooling that's in the middle of private school and public school. Allowing parents to give the, that, not my bad, allowing parents school choice, allowing them to send their child where they want them to go. If you believe in Roman Catholic ideology, you should be able to send them to the, the public, the Catholic school, and the money should follow the student rather than the school, which I see what saying. Uh, interesting. Interesting. For schools to, to, to change. And well, the allocation of the taxes we pay can be transferred to... To another school. So then the public schools will get better because they'll have to compete with the private uh, industries. They'll have to compete like with the home schools because parents will just say, well, I want to have my kid homeschooled rather than public school. And then, well, that school's lost that money. 
And then there's some debate about that where what happens if you don't have kids? Well, the money will just get funneled into a public coffer system that will help pay for the students across the across the state. Yeah. And it's also going back to school shootings. I think the biggest issue with all these school shootings is 90, I think it's over 90% of all school shootings happen in gun-free zones. We need to make sure that our schools are protected. And one of my proposals was maybe we should take veterans who have served or we have no, and we'll make sure that these veterans have no issues, no mental issues, no nothing and say your job, show up an hour, show up 30, 40 minutes before the first student arrives. Your job is to stay there until the last student leaves. And your job is to protect the students and lay down your life if it has to be. And it'll help the veterans get off the streets because we'll give them money. We'll give them a job. We'll give them opportunities. And it helps pr protect the schools because I know the, the shooter in Nashville, Tennessee skipped over one school because that school had a school resource officer that was armed. Something and, simple like that, right? And it's something simple like that, too. And it, it they always like to go, oh, we don't want to we don't want to arm teachers. Well, maybe arming teachers might be a benefit in some areas where you can't get a school resource officer. So certainly, certainly intruders not going to want to walk into a school where they know, they know people are armed. Yeah. And that's the point. Their objective yeah. is when you look at it. From it's like a it's military base armed. You don't go yeah. and you know they're armed. Like they, yep. You're right. So with qualified people. people yeah, you, you would make sure that the teachers, whoever is having the firearms qualified. qualified. Right. Sorry, my cat is deciding to join me. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Then I said that we can have that company. Yeah. He's, he's a lovely boy, but he's uh, annoying sometimes. But yeah, having pr uh, people protect the schools and their objective when you look at it from a, from a bad person's eyes is they want to create as much damage as harm as possible. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way to do that is in a gun-free zone. And, and if you make sure that it's difficult for them to get into that gun-free zone or difficult where you have to go through two, two guards who are armed. They, they might think twice. They may go, you know what? I'd rather go hit something else or I, I'd rather not do that. And that's a benefit where we'll protect the child, the children's long-term. Very interesting. Yeah. And I, I think these are, these are very good ideas. I've heard things similar to that and seeing them execute in a way that's <clears throat> done in a mindful way and carefully done could really make it much safer. Yeah. You know? But I, I'm also a believer that, you know, uh, Children will find a way to be violent. Well, oh, I don't disagree. It's it's look at London. London's the biggest example of that. They banned firearms. They had mass knife attacks. They banned knives. They had mass acid and bleach attacks. You, all they all you do is just right. ban I mean, look. We, here's the thing, and, and this is my you know when I when Hardy Power has been you know it's been around for a while yeah. now, but the idea is that. When children do something wrong, they get suspended, expelled, they go to jail, right? Yeah. In really bad areas. And I'm like, why is there not a mandate for positive reinforcement? I don't That's disagree. Right. Yeah, we so should have some form of positive reinforcement. And it's the same thing with an actual mandate where they have to do X, Y, and Z. So kids have 33 days to change the world in all of Elizabeth, New Jersey, right? Mm -hmm. And that being said, you know, these, it's all about these kids using their gifts and talents. And then when they're on the 33rd day, they get a Harmony Power Award for what they've done and have this big celebration. That's how you transform youth culture because it's it's that idea or anything like it. Anything that really is powerful and focuses on the positive because they're not, they're not getting, they're not learning the values, right? They're not- Yeah, it, it, not what I saw in, in when I stood up to the bully, I was- uh, I, no, I wasn't suspended. I got I got yelled at by the principal for standing up and fighting, and that just breeds a culture of okay, well, you either stand up to the bully and fight him and win, and then you get punished for it, and then it just tells the next person who's being bullied, well, if you stand up and fight, you're going to get yelled at by the school, you're going to get suspended, you're going to get attacked, or that that's something in other ways, right? It's yeah, more right. And then it just runs you down that cycle of path where if you go to the principal for the bullying, it's just going to make the problem worse. And then it, it's just that cycle of self-defeatism. And then eventually sad things happen because of that. And then it's where if we can break that anywhere with what your proposals are, it, it, it self saves lives. And that's the sad thing. And scary. Right. That's exactly it. I watched it. It, you know, you, when you come to events where, you know, what these kids do, you cry because you can, yeah. you look at like what <clears throat> is really happening in their world. And that can be the whole world. Right. So we know that that, these are these are real solutions and they don't cost anything. 
The yeah. real solutions actually don't require money because oh, I need we need money for this. No, we, <laughs> we need people who do their job, right? Yeah, easily. All these laws are in the books already, and people don't enforce them half the time. Or it's better yet, communities. Communities should be coming together. It's it's, and that was the one thing that I see with a lot of people who are bullied. That a lot of the times people are saved from bullies by their good friends. It's their friends stick together and they stand up together, and that's where we've lost over time with community. You used to go down to your local church every Sunday for mass or for the picnic afterwards. And people in the community would go, oh, hey, why is so-and-so mad or sad? It's like, oh, hey, they're being bullied in school. And then it's like, oh, we'll teach, we'll, we'll talk to the parent. We'll make sure that that stuff doesn't happen because it's the community that comes together. And we've lost that with our modern technolo technological age, but we've also gained a different community where people can go and say, hey, I'm not... I don't have friends in school, but I can turn on my computer and I have friends all across the world who will be there on an instant to help support me. And it's it's a give and take with the way technology advances. Well, I tell you, you know, talking to you is is refreshing. <laughs> and I, and there's no doubt to me that you'll go very far mm -hmm. in the way that you're, you're speaking and you're thinking. And uh, we, you know, we need that kind of leadership, right? So it's not about being, you know, your political uh, party. It's about you as a person and yep. what you have to offer. And the political party is your platform, right? But the children of the future, and that's what's it's why it's so important that we have this, this conversation. But before I close this show, do you have any uh, questions or any anything you'd like to say as we close the show? Uh, let's just make sure that we, we make sure we protect our next generation because that's our biggest concern. If we, every day we lose children it's a sad day we should not be losing any ch child for any reason whatsoever and all it takes is just standing up and talking with them i know it's something that i i have to do and i talk with my brothers who are in school and it's one of those things where you got to make sure just reach out just even if it's something to saying hi hello talk with people where you need to because sometimes that hello will make the difference of 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 the world where you can, and I do this every day where I, I'm walking down the street, I'll say, hello, hello, ma'am. Hello, sir. How you doing? Stuff like that, because we need to do that. People that might just save that one person who's going, you know what? My day is horrible. I don't care. I want to just leave. And then it's, someone says, hello, someone cares about them. And then they go, my entire day changed and it, it helps out. And I've, I've known it's very happening. Very, 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 you're very wise. The power of words or everything, yeah. right? It was something that I was raised with. The phrase that I raised and was raised with, and I know my youngest brother was not taught this: "Dicks and stones may break your bones, but words may never hurt you." And it's something that I know is not being taught anymore. And it's sad. Well, it's it's interesting because the, the power words can create or destroy. Mm -hmm. Words. Yeah. What's the and phrase? That, the pen's mightier than the sword. Because that because the words that we hear actually become our self talk. We start to believe the horrible things that we're being told. Yeah. And that becomes very destructive to ourselves. And then we're perpetuating that hurt. And that's that's why it's so important that that your generation mm -hmm. is where so it can make the next generation better. Understand, we come from generations of fear and intimidation. Yep. Parents would beat and, and beat their children and, and break about it. <laughs> and that that's why we're trying to clean up that mess of the past. Yep. No, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Truth. Like this is why. And it's created this downhill spiral in some way. So mm -hmm. it allows us now to rebuild and have a different mindset and make different choices and empower children so that they can go forward and, and they can have conversations with their parents. They don't have to be yep. afraid to talk to them. That's what's important. Oh, and then that's going to be a, the generational issue that's going to go last until the, to the end of time where... The next, we have to protect the next generation and the next generation will always teach us new stuff where I, I taught my grandparents for as long as they were with us how to use modern technology because most of them grew up without that stuff. And exactly. then right. when I have kids, they'll be teaching me stuff and my grandkids will be teaching me stuff in 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And it's going to be the same cycle. It's repeat the process over and over again. We stand on the shoulders of giants that we never knew. Exactly. Yep. But I tell you what, it's really a pleasure to meet with you, have you on this show and to see what the future leaders look like. And thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you very much for having me, sir.